York in exchange for what we did to preserve the Union. And what makes the story so poignant is he made the promise to finance that harbor wall. But then, of course, he was murdered. But the gesture was so magnificent and so powerful that it survived five American presidents. The final president to sign a piece of paper paying for that harbor wall was Theodore Roosevelt in 1902. And when the harbor wall opened in 1902, it was the longest 2.3 in the world. And to this day, if you speak with the Army Corps of Engineers, they'll tell you it's the best built. It requires the least amount of maintenance. So to me, it is, every time I look at it, it stands as a powerful metaphor why our community deserves sustenance and protection and celebration. And that's why I do this work, and I continue to do it, and I hope I can get your support doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Chautauqua County. Before we have a question and answer session, and thank you for this really inspiring talk, Kelly. Thank you. I was remiss in not introducing a very special member of our audience, and that is Pat Christina, who is the town of Pomfret Councilwoman. So she Where's Pat? right there. You know, no, I know Pat. <laughs> Well, thank you Great all, work. and thank you, Kevin, so much. And I'm sure you have lots of questions, including how can we do his work here in Chautauqua County? Whose support do we have in Chautauqua County? Do you know anybody? Well, as a matter of fact, some of the, the uh, gentlemen here today, we've discussed it in broad strokes. It's uh, some, some of the, um, this is just my idea. And, and when I first started this work, I, my, my true hope was that whether it succeeded or not, Perhaps it would give rise to other people's ideas. There's, there's no monopoly or there's no uh, patent on, on reform ideas or how we can reduce the size and cost of government and increase and strengthen the community. And it has, we've had, to have, I owe this young man a telephone call because he called me months ago. And you have to forgive me because this Erie County business is so consuming. Uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, these, uh, your, your counterparts in, 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 in Erie County, they're wonderful folks but uh, they're not really happy uh, with me. Uh, the, um, when, when we did have a bit of summer a couple weeks ago, when it was really hot, it was so hot, I went to an Orchard Park town board meeting just for the cold shoulder. Now I know what's going on. So the, the truth of the matter is, it's difficult to find an elected official who supports the idea. And, and it's not... And I think, they, I think they oppose it in good faith. There's, there, are, you know, there are questions raised. I'm going to talk a little bit tonight. Some folks say, well, if you have a three-board three, three board member, uh, three member board, how are they going to operate under the open meetings law? Uh, the, um, uh, does it reduce representation? Uh, the, um, well, tonight, you know, and I do take a measure of pride. If I could, coincidence, I, I'm speaking tonight at Hilbert College, a wonderful college in the town of Hamburg. And uh, the, um, you know, before I, before I devise this solution and and, and suggested that I, I did, only because I'm a bit of a nerd, you know, I did the research and I did something that any elected official here in our community could do, and that is look outside of our state borders and, um, and see what's going on around the country. Uh, you know, when I was a teenage boy, uh, long ago, the state of New York was the most dynamic, forward-looking, fun, sexy, progressive place to live in the Union. And we've ceded that to so many other communities, and. You know, New York, for, whether it be for local government or state government, it's known throughout the country and indeed the world as utterly dysfunctional and, and, and not working. By the way, do you know that New York State has more governments than the na nation of Japan? Uh, the, um, it's just an old, tired system. Uh, the, um, so what I found is there are three member boards in towns, you know, literally 30 times the size of, of, uh, of uh, towns here in Western. Westchester that are governed by three member boards and they do just fine and uh, they have open meetings law that precludes them from if two of them get together they can talk about the Buffalo Bills or they can talk about their children they can talk about you know the latest uh, Judd Apatow film but they can't discuss the people's business unless the people's there and that's a good thing everyone knows that the lack of transparency is the most pernicious disease that affects government on every level and frankly you know with all due respect we all know it is it's 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 a law that's most honored in the breach and it's most violated on a local level so the truth of the matter is my reform is going to strengthen the open meetings law because it'll make it more difficult for two people to do it and that's a good thing uh, the um, the purpose of reducing the number of elected officials is to increase citizens voice I mentioned it before the uh, um, in interviewing a, a supervisor of the town of uh, 
I think it was uh, town of Tonawanda. Uh, I interviewed him during the course of my study. He was supervisor in the 1960s. I showed him an agenda from Tonawanda today. And he looked at it, and I can't repeat the phrase that he said, but shall I suffice it to say that it was an exclamation of surprise and disgust. And he said, well, wait a minute. When I was supervisor, we never had agendas that long. We never, we never got into those areas. We let the department heads do that, and we let our citizens' committees do that. I spoke with a woman in Lincoln, Massachusetts last week who's chairman of a three-member board. Lincoln, fabulous town, growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, the, uh, just attracted another high-tech company. And I said, uh, she, I said, how do you do with a three-member board? And she said, our citizen committees run everything. They make every decision. They have 14 citizen committees that do immense amount of work. And she said, we rely on them. And, uh, and, 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 and they feel as if they have a closer, more intimate, and indeed direct handle on a decision-making authority. And that's a good thing. Um, I'm babbling here, but the point is, is it is difficult. There, I do have a number of elected officials, five of whom tonight are going to join me. And, and they've agreed to serve on a committee to take the next two years as we downsize slowly. Uh, to um, help suggest ideas by which we can start recreating the citizens' committees, go through agendas. I'm going to take to this meeting tonight, I should have brought it today, an agenda from the town of Amherst, which is 100,000 people. But, you know, I mean, for us, that's large. There's no such thing as a large town in New York. It's like saying you're the tallest person in Little Puccia. But the thing <laughs> is, is uh, the, the, the agenda for a, la a meeting last week in the town of Amherst was 187 pages long. You've got to be kidding me. No. <laughs> I also have an agenda from the county, <laughs> county legislature of the county of San Diego, which has 2 point, I'm sorry, 3.1 million people. Their agenda is 27 pages. It must have took them all day to have that meeting then. They meet, they, they start at 7, they sometimes finish at 1, 1 a.m. It's, it's, it's just insulting what they do to people. Yeah, it's just not right. So Anything over an hour is a waste of time. Agreed, agreed. That's a spirit. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Um, it isn't just a question of reducing the number of of officials at any given level. Really. There's also the question of possible mergers. And I believe that uh, Andrew Cuomo has introduced some regulations mm -hmm. that make it easier to perform mergers. Can you tell us something about that? Yes, ma'am. Two things. One is, I'm starting in my work with, uh, with the distribution of petitions and gathering signatures to compel downsizing votes to reduce the number of elected officials. I did that because I thought that was a more measured initial step, and frankly, I believe it's the long missing essential first step in getting to this other work that we have to do of, of petitioning to dissolve villages and the like. And the Attorney General, and I do take a measure of pride on this, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, he is a wonderful representative here in Western New York who, who uh, told him about my work. and. And uh, he certainly picked up the gauntlet and he did a good job. He introduced a bill which has been adopted by the State Assembly, which does reduce the signature requirement uh, threshold for uh, um, uh, petitions that would merge towns. I'm not sure that's ever going to happen. Uh, the, um, uh, I think it would be interesting and, uh, and certainly um, um, provocative. But it will also, as you say, help in the village. And here's my plan for whatever it's worth in Erie County, <clears throat> I should say our plan because of the magnificent volunteers, I thought we would again start with downsizing towns. Next spring, the Orchard Park votes next week, then Alden, then Hamburg in November. Then I'm going to take a little rest, uh, actually go back and do some more research around the country, and my plan is in the spring to do the first two village dissolution petitions. And the, the villages that we've chosen, I think is a little exciting. One is the village of Williamsville in the town of Amherst. Uh, the, um, there's a poll, there was a poll done uh, and I must say, I take a measure of pride. This has been magnificent work. I'm the luckiest guy. I'm the luckiest guy in the world to do it. And uh, I've been going door to door uh, in Williamsville for three years. And uh, there was a poll done by the local paper, paper about uh, in residents asking if they support a merger and dissolution, 82 percent. Um, and we've created a coalition of folks who understand this now. And I think we're going to be successful. Then we're going to do uh, a village in Hamburg called Blaisdell, and then one in Cheektowaga called Sloan, and the like. So we are. It's, it's, if you think about it, we've been talking about consolidation here in upstate New York for 40 years, and nothing's happened. And, and forgive me, for, but, but I think this little gift from God of this law that I discovered that gives us this first essential step. And then the other benefit is this. Sometimes when I went before the boards, uh, including one here in Chautauqua County and several in Erie and even Niagara up in Monroe, 
And when I finish the presentation that we just discussed now, they'll say, hey, Kev, what, what the heck? What are you talking about? What? You, we're not the problem. Albany is the problem. Why don't you go to Albany and downsize Albany? And I call that the shell game. You know, and if you go to Albany, they say, what about the school districts? And the school districts say, what about local government? Or what about the authorities? So here's the other, here's what I believe in my heart and know in my mind. By virtue, this is the only law that gives us a referendum power. There's no law that says you can distribute signatures and compel a vote to, con to consolidate school districts. But if we succeed in this and revive and remind ourselves of the referendum power, two things will happen. One is, we'll vest the new community of local government servants for the first time in their lives with the moral authority to then go down to Albany and say, hey, look, fellas, we've done it. We sacrificed. Now it's your turn. 